was an American freak show performer known as the mule-faced woman. Gray suffered from Sturge Weber syndrome, and after winning a 1935 Ugliest Woman contest, mm. she was signed on with F.W. Miller's Sideshow. She was paid roughly $175 a week and traveled all around America and Canada. She hated being called a freak or the ugliest woman in the world and would often cover her ears and try to hide her face. One evening when she was intoxicated, a oh. carnival handyman impregnated Grace and was never seen again. Grace's son Elmer was deformity free but grew up to be a morphine addicted alcoholic who often stole... What's up Seekers, welcome back to the channel man, how you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are doing alright man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, we break down scary creepy videos man on and there, on the web from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG videos, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank the Seekers who's been tapping into the channel, subscribing, hitting that like button man, hitting that post notification button man, that's very important Seekers man, that's how we can grow and we can connect and find new Seekers to add to the community so guys let's do those steps and we go found this video for you guys today man let's do what we do best secrets let's seek the truth this is 34 year old danielle johnson and she was from los angeles california mm. danielle was an astrology influencer and she was seen warning her followers about the upcoming eclipse she believed that something was going to happen and that everyone needed to choose a side on April 8th of this year, around 3.40 a.m., Danielle got into a verbal altercation with her boyfriend, 29-year-old Jaylin Shaney. She then fatally stabbed Jaylin inside of their apartment. Danielle then took her two daughters in her car, and once they were on the freeway, she forcibly pushed them out. Unfortunately, her eight-month-old had died on impact, but her nine-year-old has sustained serious injuries. Mm. Once that had happened, Danielle then crashed her car at high speed into a tree in Redondo Beach. Around 7.35 a.m., neighbors had noticed that Danielle and Jay Lynn's front door was wide open and they went to go check what was going on. That's when they had discovered Jay Lynn's body. Mm. Investigators ended up going into the apartment and that's when they found tarot cards, altars, black feathers, and candles. Mm. Danielle's nine-year-old daughter is now under the care of the Department of Children and Family Services. These are serious. Man, you guys know, man, the freaking that eclipse that happened April 8th, man, everybody had these, all these crazy theories of what was gonna happen or if it was a sign for anything to come, but to me, it just seemed like a regular eclipse. Nothing happened that I know of secrets. I don't know if something happened, like, over this, you know, the world is a, it's a huge place, but to hear that she freaking did that because she said everybody had to choose a side. Man, she all the weird stuff, man, so the boyfriend was probably trying to question her. I was like, What's going on? Like she did the unthinkable, man, just for a freaking eclipse seekers. That's one of the most freaking <sighs> outrageous eclipse stories I've heard so far, seekers. For your killers that are now free, part one. Up first is Issei Sagawe. Issei Sagawe is a Japanese murderer and cannibal who is known for killing Rene Hartfelt in Paris in 1981. He murdered her and then mutilated her body and then proceeded to eat her entire body over three days. But due to loopholes in the law, Issei Sagawe is now a free man and lives in Tokyo roaming the streets just like you. Mm. Up next is Pedro Lopez, and he's a Colombian serial killer who was found guilty of 110 murders, but he claimed Coming to have in? raped and killed more than 300 girls across Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador. He might be one of the worst serial killers ever due to how many people he actually killed. But despite murdering over 300 people, Pedro Lopez was only given a 14-year sentence in a psych ward and was later released on good behavior. What the f Seekers, come on, man. I know you're talking about the system, but that just has to be like, that's just blatant obvious proof. He caused out our harm and pain only got 14 years in that sex and got out for good behavior. What the hell is that, Seekers? All those freaking family, man, affected by one man. And he, and they just say 14 years in you hell. You had good behavior, you can get out. Like, what? Did they not see the freaking list of stuff of what he did, Seekers? I'm telling you, man, the system is corrupt, but we, we all got to freaking check it out, man. Something ain't right. Yo, tell me you didn't delete the video of the dead kid. 
It's 10K if you give to the popo. That's one of the texts accused killer Taylor Sherman received after he and his friends, known as the Gilbert Goons Gang, allegedly beat 16-year-old Preston Lord to death. Mm -hmm. After the incident, the FBI was offering a $10,000 reward for more information. In another message, Ooh. accused killer Jacob Meisner asked people to delete the videos to cover their tracks. All seven suspects okay. pleaded not guilty. This woman was pretending to be a 14-year-old so that way she could sleep with teen boys. What the? Her name is Alyssa Zinger, and in actuality, she's 23 years old nearly a decade older than what she was claiming to be. Mm. Real life Alyssa would work as a grocery clerk, but when she was on apps such as TikTok or Snapchat, she would pretend to be a 14-year-old girl who was homeschooled. And while she was doing this, she tricked at least five boys between 13 and 14 years old into dating her. And with some of these boys, she even went over to their houses and met their families. She even had their families thinking that she was 14. Now one of these boys who she tricked into dating her actually started dating another girl. And in response to this, Alyssa started sending them. These were videos of her sexually assaulting the minor that she was previously dating. And these videos circulated all over Snapchat. The boy told all of this to detectives. Now, aside from what she did, one of the more disturbing things about this case so far is that Alyssa has not accepted any responsibility for what she had done. She's also acting like she doesn't understand why what she did is wrong. On top of that, she's been extremely uncooperative. She actually gave detectives a phone that was not hers. When they initially asked her for her phone, she said that her true phone was lost. But nonetheless, investigators have been able to pull sexually explicit photos and videos from her iCloud. Her rainy hearing is currently scheduled for April 16th of 2024. To stay up to date on this case, make sure you click the playlist below. I'll keep you guys updated what you think. Drop in the comments. Seekers, man. I'm telling you, when the internet is one of the freaking most dangerous places. See if we can portray herself as a 14 year old and just the hair that she actually met some of the families and they couldn't even tell. Like, what the hell was that? Was she freaking that good as a freaking actor, man, to freaking pull that off? That's what I said, man. When you go behind these accounts and stuff, bro, you gotta really check because you don't know how. You don't really know the freaking true person behind that freaking TikTok account, Instagram. YouTube, it applies to everything, man. You truly don't know that person. I mean, uh, their intentions. She fooled everybody, seekers. Keep that in mind. I don't know how many other people pretend in freaking age on TikTok. It's a sky man take that. We know a seekers man. We know I guess they're known for the edits, bro. You tell right there. This is the terrifying image of a woman cowering on her rooftop trying to escape an intruder when he pops up behind her. What happened to this woman is like something off a horror film. It was September 2014 and Melora Rivera was at her home in California. Unfortunately for her though, she was not home alone on the day in question, although she was initially unaware of this. Melora worked as an actress and actually had a part in the Whitney Houston film Sparkle. Mm. She was in her bed when she noticed somebody in her property. He had apparently broken a panel to reach inside and unlock one of the doors. Terrified, the woman tried to escape onto the roof to alert authorities. She managed to balance up on the roof and mm. ring 911 before, terrifyingly, he jumped up and appeared behind her. Mm. This image was captured by a passerby. Thankfully, police arrived on the scene and the man was arrested. He was identified as 29-year-old Christian Hicks. He was swiftly arrested and the woman was rescued off the roof by the fire brigade. Gruesome facts you didn't know. She's lucky, Seekers. Grace McDaniels was She's an American aware. freak show performer known as the Mule-Faced Woman. Grace suffered from Sturge Weber syndrome, and after winning a 1935 Ugliest Woman contest, mm. she was signed on with F.W. Miller's Sideshow. She was paid roughly $175 a week and traveled all around America and Canada. 
She hated being called a freak or the ugliest woman in the world and would often cover her ears and try to hide her face. One evening when she was intoxicated, a oh. carnival handyman impregnated Grace and was never seen again. Grace's son Elmer was deformity free but grew up to be a morphine addicted alcoholic who often stole from Grace in the sideshow. He also acted as her manager and tainted her name so badly that carnivals and sideshows would no longer hire her. Dustin Honkin, who became known as Iowa's Walter White, went from nerdy Ooh. college chemistry student to full-blown meth kingpin. In order to protect his criminal enterprise, he murdered five people in 1993, two who planned to testify against him and a single mother and her two small children. On death row since 2005, he was finally put to death in summer of 2020. A serial killer's... That freaking circus story, bro, is freaking tragic, man. Huh? She was freaking normal. She had to hide like that. Secrets, man. Like, imagine being freaking. It's not like her church. She was born like that, man. And she had to freaking join freaking circus as a, like, as a freak show. Like, for people, I guess, to just gawk and look at her. You shouldn't treat people like that, secrets, man. You gotta love everybody. So awful, they asked. And there's a real world to watch. Gary Ridgeway, or the Green River Killer, is thought to be the worst serial killer in American history. He preyed on vulnerable young women, targeting mm. adult workers, but most of his victims were actually just teen runaways as young as 14 or 15 years old. Like his one victim, Deborah Esty, who ran away from home when she was 14 because she was being essayed by her own father. After she ran away, she was then attacked and essayed by a serial R-worder that was also on the loose at the time. What he the reported this attack to the police, who afterwards dropped her back off at the motel that she was staying at, and within minutes of them dropping her off, she was kidnapped by Gabe Perry, who essayed and unalived her. She was only 15 years old. I don't think I'll ever get her story out of my head. It's been reported that Gary has an extremely low IQ, but he's extremely calculated. Mm. Like for instance, Gary would leave cigarette butts with other people's DNA on them around like his victims' bodies to throw off the police. And when Gary was eventually on the police's radar, he was able to pass multiple lie detector tests. Gary hell? Bridgeway was attacking and unaliving so many women that at some points they were finding two to three bodies a week. Gary Ridgeway was eventually caught after being on the police's radar for over a decade. The DNA that eventually got Gary, the police had in their custody for over 14 years, but they just mm. couldn't get a match on it because DNA testing just wasn't what it is now. Gary Ridgeway did go on to confess to unaliving all 49 women and girls' bodies that they found, but claims there's at least 20 more out there that they just haven't found yet. I don't know if there's a case out there that scares me as much Gary as Gary Ridgeway, the Green River Killer. In the comments, let me know a case you'd want to see me cover next, especially if it's a case that really keeps you up at night. Lauren Bobert. So, oh, what he did, man, that's definitely going to keep me up at night, secrets, man. All those damn freaking women, bro. And like, hey, how she said here, like, he wasn't that smart, but he was freaking throwing off the police for like that many years. He had to have some sense of freaking, of, yeah, he had to be like, you know, he had to have some intelligence, man, to freaking, to be able to freaking put off the cost for that freaking long. Like I said, I'm passing my detective test too. Like, what the hell? He did all those actions. He passed a lot of detective tests. I don't know how that's even freaking possible, see if he's. Green River, that's what they call the Green River guy, bro. Like, what the hell? First time hearing that case in death. The son was arrested and is currently facing up to 22 charges. This is only for educational purposes, Ooh. so if you anyone involved, here's what we know so far. Don't forget to check out my Depop banner reports news. So if you don't know who Lauren Boebert is, she is a MAGA Trump Republican. She is super okay. controversial, has been kicked out of a ton of places, and has talked about her children a lot. This is Tyler Boebert. This is the son that was arrested. You might recognize him because he is also the face of her pro-life campaign. He became a teen dad at 17, and allegedly, oh. the girlfriend was 15. On February 20th, the police received a phone call of a woman reporting that someone had broken into her car on February 19th and stolen her wallet. Her car was parked, and then whoever stole her wallet used it at four different places and attempted to order $700 on sheet. As the police the investigated, hell? they found surveillance footage that showed 
three guys and one girl. It's unknown who the other people are wow. and it's believed that the girl is a minor. One of the reasons he was identified was because he was wearing a hoodie that said Shooter's Grill. If you didn't know, Lauren Boebert used to own a restaurant named Shooter's Grill and that hoodie was from her old restaurant. Good part two. She was talking all that and her freaking son got caught up with some freaking bad stuff. You know, that's gonna, she ain't gonna like that because that's gonna hurt her freaking career. Her political career, I mean, see, because that's all they freaking care about. A high school football star who took his own life after falling victim to a sextortion scam is finally seeing justice. Nigerian brothers Samuel and Samson Ogoshi posed as a woman on Instagram and tricked 17-year-old Jordan Demay into sending them intimate photos. They demanded the teen send them $1,000, threatening to share the pictures with his friends and family if he didn't pay up. Six hours later, Demay was found dead. His last message was, I'm killing myself right now because of you. Now the scammers have pleaded guilty to conspiring mm. to exploit teenagers. The only person on earth to have the Neuralink brain chip has just recorded the first ever demonstration on how well it's working. And he's already received an ad for Prime. What? For your parents, the name of the first man to walk on the moon was important. But now we finally have the identity of the world's first cyborg, Nolan mm -hmm. Arbor. The 29 year old who was paralyzed from the shoulders down after a freak diving accident is now telekinetic, meaning that everything he now does on his Mac is controlled with his mind. As you can see, he demonstrates playing chess, saying, before this, I had to use a mouse stick, but now, if you can see the cursor moving around the screen, mm -hmm. that's all me. He said that the first day they let him use it by himself, he stayed up till 6 a.m. playing Civilization 6, which would have been impossible for him before. I mean, just wait till GTA 6 drops. He also what did say that he wanted to let people know that it's not perfect and he has run into some issues, although he didn't right. specify what those issues work. But for anyone thinking about applying for human trials, he says there's nothing to be scared of, he's had no cognitive impairments, and that it's already changed his life and will soon change the world. So the question is, at some point, will you be getting the Neuralink chip or not? Imagine being s No! Like, what the f No! I'm not doing that, Seekers. What the heck? I ain't got a chip in my head. Uh, I do not agree with that secret at all. I know like, they're trying to freaking push the balance of technology, but that's a no. I ain't doing it. <laughs> I cannot do it, secrets, man. So scared of police that you freeze to death. Brandon Bushman was a 34-year-old man living in Minnesota. On June the 26th, 2023, something horrific was revealed. Hmm. Police responded to a call asking them to attend a property that hadn't been lived in since around February 2023. Just after 3.30pm, police found Brandon's body inside of a chest freezer in the property. Now, witnesses had seen police in the local area and spotted Brandon run from the upstairs of the house. It's believed that he had a warrant outstanding for his arrest, and it's believed he was trying to evade police. Mm. In doing so, he ran to the freezer of the property, presumably hoping to hide there for a short amount of time. However, after climbing into the basement freezer by choice, tragically due to it being an older model of freezer, it had no facility to be opened from the inside. It had a latching mechanism on the outside of the freezer only. Mm. Tragically, Brandon was trapped. He couldn't escape the freezer. He was found deceased and the autopsy showed no evidence of him having any prior injuries or trauma to his body. I just got locked in the freaking freezer seekers. That's a weird way to freaking go out. Another edit. Gotta call it like I said. Like we have an awesome bathtub. It's a um, jacuzzi tub meant for my muscles. And we have a wonderful ramp so I can get up and down by myself. The light switches, I can reach them now. I have wider doors so my chair can get through. You know, the they were given the van. And when the van died, they got another similar vehicle. Here's the keys to the house. Thank you. And here's the keys to the car that was donated. They were also given things like free flights to Gypsy's medical appointments or conferences. 
As far as Gypsy being sick, you almost wouldn't think that she was. A lot of people who had a lot less wrong with them would probably have done a lot more moaning and wailing about the whole thing. Here she is having tubes being put into her, having needles and treatments. And it was incredibly inspiring to see how Gypsy responded to these conditions. It was unreal. <laughs> but we all know the freaking true story behind that secret, man. That sinister freaking chilling story. It seems like, it's just like, isn't it interesting to see? like you've watched the freaking videos and stuff, I guess in the past. I mean, you really had like no idea what was going on behind the scenes. That just shows you how much like you truly don't know a situation unless you really know what's going on behind the scenes. That's that's the real things we need to be looking at. Crazy. What? In the video mm -hmm. I just showed you, 40-year-old Stephen Weber was proposing to his girlfriend. Kanisha Antoine in Tanzania, mm. but Stephen never resurfaced. Yes, just after proposing to his girlfriend, Stephen drowned in that water and never came back to the surface. At the time, the couple had rented out an underwater hotel room, oh. and that was when Stephen had planned to ask Kanisha to marry him. So on the day of, while Kanisha was in the room, Stephen went up to the surface, got his stuff ready, and hopped in the water. In the video, he takes out a note and presses it against the window. This side of the note reads, I can't hold my breath long enough to tell you everything I love about you, but everything I love about you, I love more every day. Mm -hmm. He then flipped the note over, and the other side read, Will you please be my wife? And after that, he retrieved a wedding ring in a box from his swim trunks. In the video, he then swims off camera, but like I said before, Stephen never came back up to the surface. Obviously, this was a massive shock to everybody in this situation and just such a horrific accident. Mm. And in fact, later on, Kanisha would write in a Facebook post, you never emerged from those deaths, so you never got to hear my answer. Yes, yes, a million times, yes, I will marry you. This story is just horribly sad and one of those times truly when truth is stranger than fiction. Mm. I'm going to play the rest of the clip after this, but if you want to hear more true crime stories, listen to the podcast Murder in America that I co-host with my wife, Courtney. It's available on all streaming platforms. What does that say? Oh, I just can't. <laughs> what? She's so happy. He's the most disturbed. Doesn't even know what's about to happen, man. Like, imagine, like, if you can, like, proposing, I guess, to trying to propose, think of a plan, trying to be romantic, proposing, and then you just swim off and, and you never get seen again. After you just asked that big question, seekers, man, that's freaking a truly a sad and like one of the most bizarre cases we heard. I didn't even know that, like they said, it was in an underwater hotel. I don't know, stuff like that. I mean, where is that located? I'm going to have to do some research on that, seekers, because underwater hotel, I'm going to say, isn't that like a risk? Like, what happens if you're just sleeping and the freaking water just comes in, man? But if you can say yes, but you never got to hear the answer, seekers, that's a tragic case. Serving videos on TikTok, and this is a massive trigger warning. In February 2022, a TikToker by the name of Beanbag Adventures arrived at a structure that seemed completely abandoned. Locally, this place was known as a laboratory. Upon entering the building, Beanbag Adventures was completely overwhelmed by a very, very strong odor. Despite the respiratory he was wearing, so he followed the stench and it led him down to the basement and into a strange room, and it's there that he would make a disturbing discovery. A pool of stagnant liquid containing the remains of children, and not just children, we are talking about newborn babies. Now, at first, when the video was released, there was a debate about how real the footage was. Mm -hmm. As he said in the video, he found movie props. But oh. that was likely an attempt to prevent the graphic footage from being deleted. But having seen the video, it's pretty convincing and would have to have been very costly to fake. Another indication of its authenticity is that in the high quality footage, maggots and insects are clearly on and around the bodies. After he posted the first video, he went back to business as usual, but in December 2022, 
He went back, and what he captured silenced most of the doubters. Because this time, things changed. There was children's clothes scattered all on the floor, and a pile of glass bottles appeared, and within the pool itself were even more corpses. Mm. And many bodies that were recognizably the same were now further decomposed than before. Mm. This was either a very well put together hoax, or it was real. Many people were even quick to discover that the bottles found appeared to be formaldehyde, a chemical used for the preservation of bodies. After the second video went viral, many believed that there was a serial killer on the loose or a group of killers, but others were still convinced it was a trick. Now, I obviously can't show the video on Blurred, but it's not hard to find it at all if you want to watch it. So if you decide to watch it, let me know your thoughts on it and if you think it's real. Nonetheless, this video is absolutely disturbing and it's definitely one of the most disturbing videos on TikTok that I've seen. Also, if you guys have any suggestions on videos you want me to cover on TikTok, just let me know. Seekers, man. What do you guys freaking think, man? Like he said, he went, he doubled back and went back, and the bodies were, they were freaking still there. But there was more, there was bottles and stuff over the place. But like I said, that I, that I think why people, like I said, were down because they said they found movie props there, so that's why they assumed it was big seekers. I don't know if any of the seekers want to freaking check that out for us, man. But that's not something I would do. But if anyone wants to check that out, the premise is fake. Um, if it's fake. Or it's the truth. Like, you know where to put it at. At the comments down below, man. That's where we all freaking get together and talk. Not an edit. Where's the sky, bro? We know how this. We can take our roles. Imagine getting married to a man and then two years later he chops you into 200 pieces. In 2021, Nicholas Metzen married Holly Bramley. The pair were from Lincoln in the UK. However, after they got married, the relationship completely broke down. Holly told her family she was really struggling. She said Nicholas was coercive and controlling. He would manipulate her and Holly's family said he was an evil monster. Massive trigger warning here for animals. Nicholas was known to punish Holly in sickening ways, such as killing their pet puppy by putting it in a washing machine. He left the puppy there for her to find. Mm. She'd once even run to a police station with their pet rabbits to try and save them from him. Holly was last seen alive on CCTV on the 17th of March, 2023. Shortly after, police were asked to do a welfare check for Holly, so they turned up at the couple's flat. What they found deeply concerned them. Mm. They could smell a strong scent of bleach, and they noticed blood stains in the kitchen, bathroom, and bedroom. When they asked Nicholas where his wife was, he joked that she might be hiding under the bed. He then told them that she'd gone off with a mental health support group. That was when something horrific was discovered. A member of the public spotted plastic bags floating in the river with them. When they were recovered from the water, they found that inside were human remains, including a human hand. They were identified as Holly's remains. Nicholas initially denied having anything to do with Holly's death, but then investigators made some damning discoveries. Mm. He'd taken money out of Holly's account and had also Google searched, what benefits do I get if my wife has died? And can someone haunt me after they die? He eventually pleaded guilty mm. to her murder and admitted to having cut up her body and kept it in the flat for a week. He then contacted 28-year-old Joshua Hancock to dispose of the body. He paid him to do this. He tried to claim that he was being abused by Holly, and he showed investigators a bite mark on his arm. However, an expert examined the bite mark and stated that it appeared that that bite had occurred while Holly was actually in a headlock. Joshua also pleaded guilty for his part in this horrific crime. Mm -hmm. Frustratingly, it later transpired that Nicholas actually had numerous convictions against previous partners prior to marrying Holly. He'd been convicted for domestic assault as well as disclosing sexual images and breaching a restraining order. Holly's mum, Annette, mm -hmm. spoke in court about how Nicholas had condemned the family to a life sentence of grief. He's actually due to be sentenced today, so I will update you guys in the comments as to what his sentence is. This uh, is wild. Tragic freaking case, seekers. The name that always gets me, we hear a case like that, and they, there's always somebody who searched something up. 
Like, they did not realize, man, that freaking law enforcement, they can freaking access the internet and stuff. So it's like, they truly, that just goes to show they truly don't think before they act. Yes, can somebody haunt you? Didn't even think about the freaking action, man. Like I said, what they did to that family. They're going to be grieving for the rest of their lives. Because... Although the video you're watching looks like a scene straight up out of a zombie movie, this is mm -hmm. real life footage from Mayan. And the reason Ooh. all of these people are swarming this mine is just as dark. The hills of Kachin hold the finest jade in the world, which earns billions of dollars for the companies who mine them. But it's not just the mining companies who are searching for these precious stones. Every year, they leave behind huge heaps of waste that thousands of scavengers then pick through, desperately hoping to find a rock that would change their lives. But because they are there mm. illegally, their lives are under constant threat from landslides, falling from heights, and raids from soldiers protecting the site. So perspective, mm. just the last 10 landslides, which can happen every few months, a staggering 600 people have Damn. died, many of which are only found when mining operations begin again during the next season's digging process. And because the conditions are so rough for scavengers, many are forced to turn to heroin to ease muscle pain, but quickly become addicted. Drug use around these sites are widely accepted and needles are as common as soda cans on the floor. Locals say you see people in the early morning half asleep walking around with needles in their arms or eating noodles with a syringe on their ear just like you put a cigarette. And even if you are lucky enough to find a rock, by law you can be arrested on the spot for just touching it. And that's why locals believe it has become a cursed treasure for them. But regardless, up to 400,000 people in Myanmar are said to rely on the dangerous job of illegal scavenging. Damn, so even if they do all that, they still can't even freaking, like I said, it's not like they can make a freaking power with that because they're going to get arrested soon after, man. That goes to show the things, man, people do for freaking money or for that treasure, bro. Like, all those freaking conditions they have to go through and, all, and you still see all those people swarming so they know they risk it's a risk, but they feel like they have to take it, man, to get that money. Seekers. That's the world come to, man. Truly. See, cause that's it for this video for you guys today, man. Like I said, if you guys stay with me to the end of the video, your true seekers seeking the truth. I appreciate the support, man. Like I said, let's grow. Let's grow together, seekers, man. Order for us to grow. I need you guys to subscribe. Hit that like button, man. Hit that post notifications. Also, follow me on my social medias. I would really appreciate all the support so we can stay connected on there as well. We're going to grow Seekers, man. Like I said, I haven't missed a day in April working through some stuff, man. But we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going strong. Like I said, I truly believe, man, we could grow the Seekers into something special. Like I said, man, some upgrades. I know some upgrades I do for the channel that's going to come. And just stick with me, man. We're going to grow the Seekers. You guys can catch in the next one. I'm out. Peace, Seekers. What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to the channel, man. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right. All right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we do. We break down scary and creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG videos, Facebook videos. Anything weird, usually unexplained, you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank the Seekers, man, for tapping into the channel, subbing up, and hitting that post notification bell. I really appreciate that support, man. That's how we can grow the Seekers, man, by you guys hitting that like button. And spreading the videos, man. Found this video for you guys today. Let's do what we do best, seekers. Let's seek the truth. Hear about this YouTuber who was kidnapped in Haiti and held for ransom? On March 14th, Addison Malouf, also known as Your Fellow Arab on YouTube, was kidnapped in Haiti after he traveled there to interview one of the most notorious gang leaders who goes by the name Barbecue. He's pretty much known for travel to the most dangerous parts of the world and documenting his experiences. But when he arrived to Haiti, he stayed in his empty hotel and planned to drive six hours to the city of Port-au-Prince where the streets are completely ran by gangs. This is the last video he took before he was taken by a gang and was held for a $600,000 ransom. We leave right now. We'll get there while it's dark. It's about a six hour road trip. We'll get there while it's dark, and that place is completely run by gangs. It's so dangerous to go to Haiti right now, and the fact that this guy went for a YouTube video is pretty crazy. But apparently, he was released yesterday, and then he posted this on his Instagram story saying that he was okay. This grandmother threw her... Ooh, Seekers, man. I haven't seen, like, a couple of those YouTubes, man. Some of those videos, man, they kind of get recommended to me, like, you know... Interviewing like the most dangerous gangs and stuff, and they be traveling 
Right in the world to do that, man. That takes a different type of freaking bravery to do that sequence, man. Because you're literally putting yourself in danger, man. Just, and just for a video, if you think about it, just to get that video up. But here that he's freaking captured, but he got released, so that's the main thing. But I heard some people when I freaking, um, I heard some people have said that it might be staged secret. So do you guys believe that? Do you guys really think he got captured by a hit game? Um, that game, or was it just staged, you know, for the video? Some people do that. I don't know. We're gonna have to check that out, Seekers. The two year old granddaughter, because she disliked her son in law. Fall of 2010, a 50 year old Carmela de la Rosa lived in Fairfax, Virginia with her husband and her son. She also had a daughter named Kat, and Kat was married to Jane Poddock, and they had a daughter who was two years old named Angelina. On the night of November 29th, Carmela went with her husband, children, and granddaughter to the largest shopping center in Virginia, which mm. was the Tyson Corner. They all had dinner together, and once they were done, they walked over to this pedestrian bridge that was on the sixth floor and disconnected the shopping center to the parking lot. At that time, Carmela was holding Angelina in her arms. As they were passing through the bridge, everyone was in front of Carmela, and she stopped leaned over the railing and threw Angelina 45 meters down. Angelina was then taken to the hospital, but unfortunately died a few hours later. Police ended up interrogating Carmela, and that's when she admitted that she deliberately threw her granddaughter over that bridge. They had asked her why she did this, and she stated that at that moment she had just lost her mind. Carmela then stated that at that moment when she threw her, she thought about her son-in-law, who she deeply hated for getting her daughter pregnant before marriage. In September of 2011, Carmela went to trial and her lawyer stated that she had mental problems and that she was taking medication for it at that time. Mm -hmm. The jury found Carmela guilty of first degree murder and she was sentenced to a max sentence of 35 years in prison. This is currently the most... Seekers, man. I tell you, man, the things people will do, bro, when they have that big anger in their heart is just... It was just mind blowing, man. She got mad at her son in law because of what he did with her daughter before. I guess they got mad in her eyes and she just decided to say, We're just going to end it all. Just because he he did something that she didn't like and she just decided to take it to the freaking most extreme level seekers, man. That's how I said seekers, you got to be aware of these people, man, around in your lives. You don't know, man, what, what, what they'll do, bro. If you. If you piss them off or make them angry. Crazy case seekers. Terrifying video on the dark web. It was published anonymously, so we don't have any more information. But the ending will call everything into question. The hell is that? girls were arrested in Washington, D.C. for the brutal attack of a 64-year-old disabled man in 2023. And I do want to warn you guys that these details are very hard to listen to. According to the Washington Post, the three young girls were allegedly caught on camera carrying out what detectives describe as the horrific October 17th, 2023 murder mm. of Reggie Brown. The graphic minute long cell phone video showed a group of five girls chasing Brown into an alley just before 1 a.m. And you guys, this is where the story just is so heartbreaking. As Brown tried to climb up a chain fence, the girls pulled him down and stomped his head into the concrete pavement. And not only that, detectives say they pulled his pants down around his ankles removed his belt and then beat mm. him with it and this story gets even worse as brown laid on the ground the girls became happy they were laughing and chatting about what happened one of the girls saying quote he's leaking 
referring to Brown bleeding. The three girls were arrested on Friday. They were charged with first and second degree murder in Brown's death. And attorneys for the three pleaded not guilty to the charges. This is insane, Seekers, man. This is freaking... Like, freaking young people, bro, doing this, man. What the hell is going on with our world? Pretty sure he's probably just, a, just minding his business and they just decided just to run down and freaking attack him. This is in D.C. too. I'm just going to quote. And like I said, when they did the act, they were just laughing and smiling. Like, I'm going to say he's weak. And like, the hell is what's going through their damn minds and they be doing this stuff, bro? And there was nobody else around when that was going on. And he tried to peek and climb up that fence. You know, his age, he probably tried to do the best he could to get away, but he couldn't, man. Seekers, they're that young, bro. People that young, man. Their whole life is over, man. Just, just saw some dumb stuff because they just decided to attack a, a random freaking man, and they got laid with the consequences. Seekers, tragic case, bro. Doesn't matter if you're young, old, man. People do anything. Do you guys remember the case of Lacey Fletcher, the woman who melted into her couch? Well, the people responsible for this have been sentenced. But let me remind you guys a little bit about 36-year-old Lacey. In 2022, she was found deceased on her family's couch and apparently she sat there for 12 years without moving. So how exactly does that happen? Well, Lacey had severe autism and she was nonverbal, so she solely depended on her parents as her caregiver. But after a year, Years of neglect, she weighed less than 100 pounds. She was found covered in maggots at her own waist. And again, this is how the couch looked like when they found Lacey deceased. Lacey's cause of death was acute medical neglect, and ultimately, her parents, Sheila and Clay Fletcher, were each sentenced this month to 40 years but will only be serving 20 years in prison. Now, what's outrageous is that her parents, who went from this to this, testified that their daughter refused any medical attention. How can someone who couldn't communicate and completely relied on them refuse medical attention? A 36 year old weighing less than 100 pounds, let that sink in. This tragedy could have been prevented. There is no excuse. You ever see it like this lizard? Look me down the eyes and say that's a face that says I'm, I'm happy to be on this earth. He's not happy to be here. He didn't ask for this. Now I get you. I feel you. I do. Legless lizard's a terrible way to live. I can give you three animals that got screwed even worse. Number one, the Luna Moth. You want to know why? They don't have a mouth. They don't have a mouth. Matter of fact, the worst part is it's not even like they're born without one. The caterpillars do, but once they reach their final form, nature just nerfs them for no reason, completely unprovoked, which obviously means eat. they can't eat. All they have is whatever they store as caterpillars. Once that runs out, so does their free trial to living. Basically, fresh out of the cocoon, they get about a week to date, mate, and procreate before they go from a permanent fast to part of the past, no Ramadan. They also <laughs> don't have a digestive system, so they don't even get hungry. They just get more and more tired before they eventually get kicked off the mortal coil. Number two are hyenas, because that is a female. You can probably see where this is going. They have a pseudo phallus they have to push pups out of them. Just letting you know, it's a jihad for both parties. Apparently, it's like an anti-grape defense, no fruit, so a female can flush out the baby batter of an undesirable. Think of ducks having maize like vajangas. Ooh. But with hyenas, not only do a good number of cubs suffocate to death while being born, a lot of first-time mothers get torn up so bad they bleed to a flat line. Damn, double homicide. Three is the Babarusa for one reason and one reason only. This uh. picture's real. It's a wild pig found in Indonesia with tusks that can grow through its mouth. Sometimes they keep growing and give the struggle swine a DIY lobotomy. Worst part is, it's like pig Parkinson's. By the time the teeth turn on them, they're old enough to have passed off the generational jihad to its children which means not even evolution can save them the more you know so you know the speaking animal facts bro shocking man especially the one by the freaking moth like he said they just have damn made like a free child they didn't born without a mouth can't eat no do nothing he said they ain't got like a week or something to survive then that's it damn <laughs> the more you know the secrets man i told you these videos be expanding my knowledge base bro one of her 16 month old daughter alone while she went on a 10 day vacation on the beach and all this fun stuff to come home to her daughter unresponsive because obviously the baby's been home alone for the last 10 days and her daughter ends up being pronounced dead and the baby died from being dehydrated and malnourished 
well, she got sentenced to life in prison without parole, and mm-hmm. she had the nerve to say that her daughter and God forgive her. Like, be for real. I hate when people try to do that shit. Like, no, your baby and God do not forgive you for going on a 10-day long vacation and leaving your baby at home in a playpen. Like, you can say whatever you want to make yourself feel better, but what you did was so horrifically wrong. It's just disgusting. I hate that shit. My wife just shot me. Please. Freaking crazy, but see, guys. How, how, like, how does yeah, she pull off, like she said, she pull off an act like that and just going to say that? Her daughter forgives her. Like, no, you went on a ten day vacation spree and just uh and just left your freaking daughter there like a freaking unresponsible parent, look what happened. Now you serve a life in prison and you'd say your daughter forgives her. I don't I don't think so. Like she said, people like that are freaking dangerous, man. They do a, a horrific act and like just think they're automatically forgiven. Doesn't work like that. Okay, where are you shot at? My arm. Okay. How old are you? Stop. Twenty-five. I'm an officer police officer. I'm locked in the okay. basement. She's shooting through the door. Please help me. Okay. I stay on the phone. Okay. Back. 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 She's going to come and show me. 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 She's going I don't know. Something. Do you have a shirt on? Do you have a pair of pants? Whatever you have, I need you to take it on and tie it tight. <laughs> right here in the bed, okay? These are edit seekers, man. I saw I got caught a moment I see when they just freaking turn black or something chasing after them. If this doesn't disturb you, I don't know what will. Two weeks ago, a 15-year-old in Utah contacted the police and claimed that their own parents had been assaulting them for over a year. So the identity of the victims mm. and the perpetrator have been concealed for now, but this is what we know. Apparently, about a year ago, the parents of the victim found that their child had been Snapchatting and engaging with chats with strangers online, and that these chats with strangers had been graphic, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. These two parents then decided that it would be safer if they engaged in these graphic acts with their own daughter instead. This led to a year and a half of abuse by the victim's stepfather, abuse that her mother allegedly joined in on. When the victim's stepfather was arrested, he admitted right away that he had been engaging in these acts with his daughter. The stepfather also admitted to the police that he and his wife went out and bought toys to use on their daughter. It seems as if the victim's mother and father felt like they needed to show their daughter how to use these devices, and so they did. So the suspects are currently being held in jail because they have four more children together. This time they are their biological children. And that's the reason why they're being held, because the authorities believe that Mm -hmm. these two parents may be a significant threat to their own kids. Now, we talk about stuff like this all the time on my TikTok, whether it's murder stories, stories about pedophiles, all types of true crime. And this is just one of those stories that I came across that truly disturbs me to my core. These were two normal-seeming parents from Utah. They probably had friends and family that loved and respected them up until they were caught. And it goes to show that you really just don't know anybody. And I'm sure that as more and more details are revealed from this story, it's going to get even more disturbing. You said hit the head up. Hit the nail on the head, man. Like I said, it just seemed like two freaking normal people, man, but they were doing the most freaking disturbing acts. So, like I said, it's kind of scary how you could just, like, hide that part of yourself. You could just seem completely normal, but behind the scenes, behind closed doors, you could be a completely different person, man. That's why I say it's because you can never trust anybody, bro. That goes for your family, friends, anybody, bro. Got to learn how to freaking, you know, how to try to spot them out if you can. Make it like a whole lot easier, Seekers.
disturbing case. Ms. Anderson, for the record, would you state your full name, please? Yes, I am Princess Kalikia Hassan Tupape II, representing the entity Dejon Anderson. You're known as Dejon Anderson? I'm representing the entity as Dejon Anderson. Your date of birth? My date of birth is February 2nd, 1961. That would make me how old? That would make me 63 years old. And the last four digits of your social security number? I do not have a social security number. I have a declaration of nationality underneath the Washita Morris of the Indigenous People of the United Nations, Chapter 2-1593. She lost. My address is... Do you have a good contact telephone number? I don't know my contact number by heart. I believe it's... Are you under the influence of any drugs, including alcohol? No, I'm not. Do you read and understand the English language? Yes, I do. If I say something you don't understand, will you let me know? I will most definitely will. Ms. Anderson? Officer Busey, who's investigated this, looked for you for the past two years, and Prosecutor Hunt had charged you with three counts of criminal conduct. Count one is murder as a felony. Would it indicate that between April the 10th, 2022, and April the 16th, 2022, in Washington County, State of Indiana... See, because you got someone who's zoomed into their hands, but she didn't... I'll take nothing apologize for it. 1v1, a Wolverine would whoop a honey badger's ass. Streets made this aggressive bull cut the face of Black Air Force energy. I'll talk to Wolverine's the CEO of Cell Block D tendencies. First of all, they're more than capable of hunting for themselves, but some dudes can't be bothered to get their own bread. Instead, they gotta steal from the baker. And by baker, I mean they'll tax animals like wolves, cougars, even bears. Let me remind you, they're about the size of a medium dog, yet the crackhead courage can have an overgrown canyon cat backpedaling. And you thought honey badgers were on timing. And they are, but Wolverines, where else are you gonna find a war weasel 2v1 in a pair of wolves? But don't get it twisted, they can hunt, and they are very good at it. They've been known to murk moose by either going after one that's already injured or one stuck in the snow, since felony ferrets like a psychopath with snowshoes. And they'll track you down and run your fade like John Wick. This reindeer was injured and likely bleeding, so the travel sized bear followed it and delivered smoke directly to the face like a cigarette. They've also been known to eat porcupines, or at least die trying. And you can even find a story of a wolverine packing up a polar bear. Yeah, it was at a zoo, but that's still a fat W. Damn. Wolverines have this really bad habit of whenever they find something that doesn't belong to them, they'll immediately soak it with the smell of death, strong enough to make you cry fresh from its brown eye. A smell so offensive they've been nicknamed Skunk Bear. There have been stories mm. of them breaking into cabins, blowing up the place like a truck stop bathroom, and walking out with like a sock or something. Almost forgot, this walking garbage disposal has rotated molars in the back of its mouth, meaning they can chew through solid bone and frozen meat. I'm sorry, but a motivated skunk monkey is absolutely folding an Oreo coated temper tantrum, but that's just me. It truly is, bro. I ain't know Wolverines was like that, man. But that makes sense, man. You know, I guess why they basically the Wolverine, you know, taking care of all of it. It's daily, too. Sundays after church, when we all just clean through the leftovers, it's like the highlight of my week. I love it so it much. It is. Mom doesn't get mad at us for eating anything. That and the kids just open up. Like, everyone's pretty mm. relaxed. The husband of a popular social media. You saw the way yeah, she freaking paused when she said, and the kids, when she, the daughter said she, they, she doesn't get mad when we eat anything. And she just gave it that look. Like, why the hell you just say that? So she was only eat. They was only eat one time a week. She caught her in 4K. That's why, like, she. I get. I think that's why she got freaking mad. Cause it's freaking got documented. And she, you know, she probably didn't want that to get out. Seekers. It's the little things, man. The details we got to pay attention to. The influencer has been charged over the alleged murder of his own mother. Andre Zachary Rebello is in for his custody after he being charged with the one count of murder dating back to May 2020 when the body of his mum was found in a multi-million dollar home in Perth. The cryptocurrency dealer and business manager is married to model Gracie Pascopo, who has over 1 million Instagram followers. Mm. Rebello fronted court on Tuesday and is also facing 35 fraud charges, which allegedly occurred in the months following his mother's death. 
the alleged offences stemmed from May to July 2020 and mm. include fraudery and attempts to gain a benefit by fraud. Rebello has pleaded not guilty to the alleged financial claims and will face a trial over that matter in December next year. Mm. Rebello has not entered a plea on the murder charge and will face court later this year. Andre and Gracie have been dating for eight years and share a three-year-old son named Romeo. Gracie's social media accounts were once flooded with photos of her and Rebello, but she has been noticeably absent for most of the past year. Rebello did, however, feature in a video on Miss Piscopo's YouTube account in September. Rebello will face court again on December 21st. Once again, man, social media can freaking glide your perception, bro. You see posted those pictures. And you think they were the freaking like perfect couple, but she didn't know the freaking horrible backstory behind of what the, the guy did, the husband. It's like, damn, it's like, social media really freaking changes your perception, bro. Like, you're gonna have her have a whole fake life online, but she don't know what's going on behind the scenes. That's what I've been learning recently, Seekers. Hopefully you guys learn that as well, man. Don't believe anything on the internet. <laughs> You can't. It's a mirage. Bryant dropped his guard. He thought they'd stop recording. If you think the criminal in the video was stupid, you are absolutely correct. The man in the video is Martin Bryant, who despite being 28 years old during the interrogation, had an IQ of 66, equivalent to that of an 11-year-old. His actions, however, were not as innocent. On April 26, 1996, Bryant would arrive at Port Arthur and carry out the deadliest massacre in modern Australian history, leaving 35 deceased and 23 others injured. Many believe that his actions were for attention and notoriety, inspired by previous massacres. A neighbor of Bryant said that he allegedly told him that he'll do something that would make everyone remember him. Others believe that his motive was to kill the couple, David and Noeline Martin. Brian blamed the couple and believed that they were the reason for his father's depression, which ended up with him taking his own life. After his capture, he was very curious about the total death count and seemed impressed by the number. Australia's most heinous man was given 35 life sentences and 1,652 years in prison. Damn. He got caught on 4K, man. I'm into that, so. He got all those damn life sentences, too. He got action pre consequences, man. They said he had an IQ of 66. That's freaking what the hell. Alright, here are some movies that have scared the shit out of me, and I will never stop recommending them. Hmm. But be warned, because some of these movies are very violent, very creepy, and just overall, like, what the fuck am I watching type of films. But as always, let's just fucking jump right into it. Right. First up, let's talk about the movie Baskin. This is a 2015 Turkish horror film about five policemen who are responding to a distress call coming from an abandoned building. And when they get to the abandoned building, they go inside, and the more that they inspect this building, the more they realize they're entering the literal mouth of hell. The reason this movie freaked me out so much was its overall visuals, but honestly, like, the third act is just so, like, disturbing, and it just makes me feel really gross and weird inside. Like, this movie, I'm not gonna lie, did give me nightmares for a few nights after watching it. If you would like to check this one out, here's the list of where it's currently streaming. Next up, I'm let's good. talk about The Sadness. This is a Taiwanese horror film about a virus that breaks out, and this virus basically causes people to act out on their most intrusive and, like, violent thoughts. Mm -hmm. This movie follows a couple who are trying to reunite amongst the fucking mayhem that's going on. The reason that this movie freaked me out was mainly this dude on the very top. Like, he just freaked me the fuck out. This guy just gave me really creepy and like pervy vibes and he has this like maniacal laugh that just like really freaked me out. Like I would not want to be chased by this dude like whatsoever. Trigger warning though, there is an essay scene and all I'm going to say is it involves an eye socket. That's all I'm going to say about that. 
but also be warned, this movie is extremely bloody and extremely gory. It's honestly one of the most goriest films that I've seen. And if you'd like to check this one out, here's the list of where this one is currently streaming. Next up is the movie The Similars. Similars. This is a Mexican horror film about a group of people in the 1960s who get stuck at a bus station during a horrible freak rainstorm. Mm. One by one, each person falls victim to a very unusual seizure, and when they come out of the seizure, they all have the same face of one man that's at the bus station. And they all start to notice that even like on the magazines and posters at the bus station, all the people on it have the same face of this man. Mm. The reason this movie freaked me out so much was because it's very like Twilight zone like things are happening in this movie that should not be happening, but they are happening. Um, and it's just very like, what the fuck? You could almost categorize this movie as a cosmic horror film, which is, like, my favorite subgenre of horror. I guess you can kind of say this really does freak me out because it's kind of like the fear of the unknown. Like, we don't know why this this shit's going down, but it's going down. And if you would like to check this one out, here's where this one is currently streaming. And as always, if you guys have seen any of these movies, please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Some freaking... Crazy ass movie, some crazy movies, man, with those freaking devious plots, bro. I ain't, I ain't checking those out though. I ain't gonna lie. Those descriptions he gave, and you said he was in the hood and he got nightmares, but I believe him, bro. I, you gotta see this. That ain't me. I ain't checking those out. Seekers, man, that's it for this video for you guys today. If you guys made it with me to the end of the video, if you're a true seeker seeking the truth, I greatly appreciate the support, guys. Like I said, guys, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, hit that post notification bell, hit that like button, man. Also, follow me on my social medias on there as well, guys. So, all the seekers, so we can stay connected. I'm trying to get my numbers up there as well. Um, like I said, also, man, tell me again, man. Like I said, should I start a Discord so you guys can send me clips, man? I'll do it, but only if you guys like want me to do it. We grind in April, man. Hopefully, I can continue my um daily uploads, man. Like I said, I'm still deciding because the things going on behind the, behind the scenes that may kind of prevent me from doing daily uploads. But we're just gonna see how this shakes out. I'm out. You guys, gonna catch you in the next one. Peace, seekers. What's up, seekers? Welcome back to the channel, man. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you're brand new to this channel, if you don't know what we do, we break down scary and creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG reels, Facebook, anything weird, usually unexplained, you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank the seekers, man, who's been tapping in with the, to the channel. I really appreciate your support. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe, hit that post notification bell so we can grow our community um, together. Found this video for you guys today. Let's do what we do best, seekers. Let's seek the truth. This mom married two of her children. Oklahoma of 2001, 44-year-old Patricia Spann had lost her husband, James Spann. They had three children together, two boys and one girl. Patricia had lost custody of her children soon after James's death. The children's paternal grandmother had ended mm. up adopting them. The children grew up in the care of their grandmother until some of them became young adults. During that time, they had no contact with their birth mother, Patricia. In 2007, Patricia had introduced herself as a potential date for her 18-year-old son, Jody. Jody was unaware that Patricia was his birth mother, and they ended up getting married in 2008. In 2010, Jody ended up finding out that Patricia was his biological mother and ended the marriage. In 2014, Patricia was able to reunite with her daughter, Misty, and claimed that they just hit it off. And on March 26, 2016, the both of them ended up getting married. Authorities had found out about the relationship during a child welfare investigation just five months later. Detectives had learned that not only had she married her daughter, but she had married her son as well. <laughs> Trisha had managed to marry both of her children since her name was not on their birth certificates. Misty was given a 10-year suspended jail sentence after admitting to incest. In January of 2018, Patricia went to trial, pled guilty, and was sentenced to two years in prison and got an additional eight years of probation. Boeing released... That's insane, Seekers, man. Like, knowing that she willingly did that with her second gig, bro. <sighs> there has to be something going on, right? Because there's just no way you just say, I'm going to marry my daughter. Like, we'll be going through people's minds, Seekers, when they be doing acts like this. I truly don't get it, man. These cases, man. Man, it's to shock us with each and every freaking video, Seekers. That's how I say you got to tap in with us, man. 
You're going to learn some new stuff. It's the best statement. We are saddened by Mr. Barnett's death and our thoughts are with his friends and family. Mm -hmm. When people found out about John's death, everyone had so many questions and were speculating the obvious. What are the odds that this man who was speaking against one of the biggest and richest companies in the world ends up dead? Before John passed away, he told his lawyers that he felt like people in the company were spying on him. Then one of John's close friends was interviewed and she said that one day she was speaking to John about the lawsuit and she asked him if he was scared that something could happen to him. He did not commit suicide. There's no way. He wasn't concerned about safety because I asked him, I said, aren't you scared? The way he was all, uh, no, I ain't scared. Um, he said, but if anything happens to me, it's not suicide. You know, I know that he did not commit suicide. There's no way. Dirty facts about his Seekers. What do you guys think on that, man? Like I said, that kind of, that can't be coincidence, right? He was about to talk out against one of the most big and richest companies in the world and then something just happened. And people are really just going to chop it up to that, man. Sean and Terry, bro, Seekers, man. It's like once you get that certain level of power, money, influence, you could, they think they can do anything, man. You just don't and can't get away without the, um, and get away with it with no consequences. It looks like it's freaking happening. Like, how do people see through this, man? It's like when people want to speak up against speaking like powerful companies or a person, something mysteriously happens and people just chalk it up to that. It's like they're just trying to hurry up and just freaking cover it up. What do you guys think, Seekers? Is there more to that case? History that school probably didn't teach you, part 14. Philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau would hide in alleyways, pull his pants down, and jump scare women ass first in hopes they would get scared and <gasps> spank him in self-defense. Apparently, this was his kink. A famous Irish oh. pirate named Anne Bonny would fight with one boob out just to show that not only are you about to get murdered, but you're about to get murdered by an 18-year-old girl. Oh, mm. this? This is my murder titty. York. The only slave on the Lewis and Clark expedition was a sensation among indigenous American women. They found the guy quite attractive and he would tell them that he was part bear so they would sleep with him in hopes of producing a bear warrior baby. LBJ used to take out his PP mm. and show people how big it was. He referred to it as Jumbo and here's a phone call of him complaining to a clothing company that their pants were too tight on his ladybird lance. Hang the crotch down where your nuts hang. It's always a little too tight. If you can't leave me about an inch from the, where the zipper ends, uh, round uh, under my back to my bum hole. Okay, these seekers, which facts shocked you the most? Um, I'm gonna have to go with. I think the indigenous, oh, I'm man, bro. How he became a warrior. <laughs> Yo, how you say he was that beer, bro? Try to raise him up, man. Did it work? What the hell? That shot read the most secrets. What about you guys? Edit. These are the most disturbing torture devices I saw at the Torture Museum in Amsterdam. This device is called the Garot. And again, when I first saw it, it really didn't seem that bad. Mm. But then I found out why it's actually been called the harshest execution method of all time. The Garot was used during medieval times and even later all around the world for punishment, execution, and even as a tool for assassinations. The most recent case I found happened less than 50 years ago in Spain. So how does mm. this device work? The victim is held in place by a collar that's made of iron here, but can also be made with wires. It's then mm. Tightened all the way, the spike piercing through the victim, supposedly crushing their brainstem. But it didn't always work because the spike would often miss the brainstem. So it would just be buried in the victim's head until they passed, which allegedly could take over 15 minutes. But we're not done because there's just a few more torture devices I saw in this museum, so follow to hear all their backstories. Our timeline is completely messed up and it's going to blow your mind. Up first, for example, Eminem and Picasso were alive at the same time for two years. I don't know about you, but am I the only one that thought Picasso was around in the 1800s? Another one to wrap your head around is that the woolly mammoths were around at the same time the pyramids were being built. But just wait, this is just the beginning. 
Mm. Next, Rosa Parks lived long enough to see the first two Shrek movies in theaters. Like what? Next, when the Declaration of Independence was being signed, nobody knew dinosaurs even existed. Think about that, like dinosaurs weren't even discovered yet. This next one is going to absolutely blow your mind. Mm. Cleopatra was born closer to the invention of the iPhone than to the actual pyramids being built. Finally, this next one makes zero sense, but it's absolutely true. Oxford University was founded 300 years before the Aztec Empire. Like how? Oh, see kids? This man is about to become I'm the wrong. first person ever to run the full length of Africa. And after running mm -hmm. every single day for the last 340, he only has nine left to go. Russ Cook from the UK started the 9,000 mile trip from the tip of South Africa and will finish at the edge of Tunisia. And honestly, Russ gives David Goggins a bloody run for his money for hardest man alive. Because not only has he decided to run roughly two marathons a day through some of the hottest countries on the planet, mm while being ginger but on his travels he's been kidnapped and driven roughly seven miles into the jungle and was very lucky to make it out alive he and his video team were robbed at gunpoint he's had to wade through rivers hike over mountains run at night through the sahara he's got caught in sandstorms and oh. even when he was peeing blood he continued running when he had food poisoning he continued running when he had the shits and needed to vomit he stopped and did his thing and then continued running the only thing that almost stopped this man was when he couldn't get a visa to pass through algeria but he turned to his followers for help and people gathered together and managed to get the attention of the Algerian embassy in the UK who then personally reached out to him on X and granted him a courtesy visa on the spot so far he's raised a massive 322,000 pounds for charity and has a massive party planned for when he reaches the finish line and if it's taking you 340 days to find out that there is a man running the entire length of Africa you now have nine days left to watch history being made it's crazy, Seekers, man. It's not like no freaking, it's not on the news or anything like that, man. I'd have found out here. But if I'm well, from UK all the way to Africa, that's insane. Nine days left, and they posted this, man. And we're going to have to check that out. See if it hit the finish line yet, or does he have a couple of days left, bro? On that far of a length, man. Go through all those trials and tribulations, man, to keep going, Seekers. A lot of people can do that. The person punching random women in New York has been caught. But honestly, this gets weird. Skibuki Stora was charged with assault on Wednesday for punching Haley. And while it's still not clear whether he was the same person that punched punched the numerous others. The NYPD said that he has been arrested three times in the past six months for similar incidences and has an extensive criminal record, which begs the question why he continues being let back on the streets. And what's crazier is that he's been snitching on himself, because if you go onto just some of his around 10 TikTok accounts, you'll find that not only is he a failed politician unsuccessfully running for mayor of New York, governor, mm -hmm. and city council, but he has countless videos of him walking around and harassing women on the street. Sometimes he'll say things like, slow down, what are you in a rush for? Other times he'll comment on what they're wearing or how their hair is styled. And sometimes he'll just record them without saying anything. Fortunately though, this time it's been reported that he has been booked into a jail and is scheduled to appear before a judge on April the 3rd. Further that you look into dirt. See, because I've been seeing that case, you know, on the news and stuff, or just going around by, like, how this person just going around punching people, man. And why are the cops, why did they keep letting him out, man, if they know he had that... Like that extensive record, you keep letting the muscle keep keep doing the same thing, man. He made all those TikTok accounts prove what type of person he is, man, and just let him out. You're saying sometimes how I got the systems up here, sometimes it's up here, sometimes it's below here, bro. He finally got called, man, and brought to justice. Could you just imagine you just walking around minding your own business to somebody just boom, like what? No reason, no nothing. They just do that just to do it. Lucky you didn't write in a freaking to the right person, man. Something else could have happened to you, because Dark history, you start to realize just how dark it really is. This woman behind me, this is Lorleen Wallace. She was the first female governor of Alabama, and she was diagnosed with stage four cervical cancer. Dark history for Lorleen was that legally, doctors did not have to tell her. They only told 
her husband. They let that sink in. She was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer, terminal cancer, and only her husband was told. Her husband decided not to tell her. Legally, he didn't have to. It was thought at the time that women's nerves were too fragile to be able to handle news like this, so only their husbands were told. I think we're probably going to cover this on the podcast because this is actually a pretty in-depth story if you want to listen. Basically, the way this story ends is that Lorleen, she does become governor. She runs, but she only lives through the first year of her term. She was never initially told she was dying. Chainsaw wielding man in scream costume accused of killing next door neighbor. This is 30 year old Zach Moore. He's now being accused of attacking his neighbor with a chainsaw and then stabbing him to death. This happened in Pennsylvania on March 25th at 3 p.m. Officers responded to a call. That's when they found the victim with life threatening injuries. They tried to rush into the hospital, but he was pronounced dead upon arrival. Police got intel that the suspect fled on foot. They put all schools in the area on lockdown. That's when they found Zach Moyer barricaded up in his own home on the same street. The victim's name is Edward Whitehead Jr. Apparently Moyer went to Whitehead's home wearing a scream costume to, I guess, scare him. Obviously, that prank went wrong and Moyer took it way too far. The chainsaw hit the victim in his head. He was then stabbed all over, including his chest, arms, and back. While the police were trying to get Moyer out of his house, he was writing notes to them claiming that his neighbor was a criminal. But texts got leaked between him and his sister saying that he wanted to kill Ed, the neighbor. It's not looking too good for him right now. Let me know what you guys think about this story in the comment section below. And as always, these videos are for informational purposes only. Crazy story, Seekers. He freaking caught himself in 4K, man. The text messages are revealed at all. This is new release footage after 12-year-old Russell escaped from Jody Hildebrand's house back in August 2023. He was kept tied up in Jody's house along with his sister and after he escaped, he ran to this neighbor's home to get some help. He had cuts and sores on his wrists and ankles. I can't help but notice how skinny and frail he looks. So after this man got off the phone with police, police then went to Jody's house to look for another one of Ruby's children and they arrested Jody and this is how it went. Mm. Police officers, open up! Police officers, open up! Police officers, open up! Open up! Step out. I have, I have by church. That's great. Step out of the house. No, I'm not going to step out of the house. Step out of the house. Step out of the house. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just finish. Let's go. Wait a minute. How do you cover my house? Right there. Mm -hmm. Who can they come up into my house? So have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant? Have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant? Have a seat right there. I'll explain everything after. Have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant, sir? Control public so can you hold the air? We're searching the house. I can tell you what's in the house. Okay. Just have a seat right there for me. No, she wants Do you to have tell. a search warrant? We'll explain it after this. You can't just come into my house without a search warrant. We'll explain everything after this now. The fact that Jody was already on the phone with her lawyer when police arrived is crazy to me. It just shows that she had a feeling that she was already in trouble, so she called her attorney. A town in Thailand is She chatted. She called her attorney, man, because she knew what was coming, man, after that, um, the 12 year old was able to, to leave or to escape, actually. She knew what was coming. How's she gonna ask this? I, I, when they asked when they searched in the house, she said, yeah, I can tell you what's in the house. Like, she already knew what was about to go down. And she just tried to cover it up. It, it up. I'm telling you, secrets, man, people like that are dangerous, bro. I'm trying to avoid consequences. What type of person does that in the first place anyway? Doesn't make sense to me, Seekers. <sighs> These cases, man, be opening my mind, Seekers. Hopefully it does the same thing with you guys. Now being overrun by a massive monkey gang, and police what? are now fighting back. We got a freaking monkey war before Jody. Now Lopwuri has been dealing with huge amounts of monkeys since the pandemic, stealing mm. food from people and shops, vandalizing property, and even damaging vehicles. But it's got so bad recently that the police general has now ordered a special unit specifically to combat the monkeys. And yes, 
somehow this is a real police vest that this unit is wearing. And this war what? is getting tactical because the monkeys have started learning which officers are armed and which are not. So police have had to adapt by hiding their faces and tranquilizers. Police have mm. even apparently had to go on a mission to capture the monkey gang's leader named Aikrao, who has a reputation for being infamously aggressive. As of right now, the war what? rages on, so I'll keep you updated. This president... There's a monkey war going on, bro, in Thailand? Now that needs to be on the news, bro. People need to know about the monkey war, man. We gotta, we gotta help, bro. What the? That's crazy secrets, man. You know, the most bizarre stories I've ever heard so far, man. How they had to combat monkeys and there's a whole monkey force dedicated squad. Who's with it, bro? I'm definitely got to dive into that case, secrets. Employee helped two inmates escape. New York Prison Break tells a story about how mm -hmm. Joyce Mitchell helped two killers escape prison. David Sweat and Richard Mad were able to seduce Joyce in helping them escape. Mm. Joyce had no idea that they were using her to their advantage. Obviously, this ended up being really bad since now there's two killers on the loose. I'm partnering with Lifetime's Break from the Headlines to get you excited about their true crime films. To find out what happens next, make sure to check out Lifetime's Rip from the Headlines, New York Prison Break at mylifetime.com slash watch ripped. Should we check that out, Secrets? This video is so disturbing that a number of people have fell ill after watching it. Proceed with caution. That one here smells great. Which one? Mm. Smells like mother's crazy sister cake. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I do. It mm. smells so good. She couldn't have been that crazy. I don't think so. Oh, you don't think so, huh? No. Well, she put her poodle one time in a microwave oven to eat it. Yeah, to eat it. Oh, no. No, 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 silly. Exploded, and they were both found dead. She must have been out of her head. A poodle room? That was a creepy ass video, Seekers. Now the edit man got caught like I see it. You take that patronizing tone with me, boy. You're wearing a hat that says ice wall. I wish I had the balls to walk around with a sign on my head that says mm -hmm. I had to learn how to read. When the Navy went to Antarctica and can climb a helicopter and panning and panning, they never get to the end because it was an ice wall. Whoa, okay, pause. Antarctica's mm -hmm. really big, about the size of one Antarctica. But you seem to have gotten the size of uh, Antarctica confused with the size of Rhode Island. Secondly, let's critical think for a second if you can do that. For some lapse of judgment on my end, I decided to give you a helicopter, and I told you to fly it around Antarctica. Firstly, you wouldn't make it. It's too big. You'd run out of fuel. You'd crash into the ocean. For any confusion, see Rhode Island. Before you crashed into the ocean, if you were flying around Antarctica in a big counterclockwise circle, do you know what you would see out of the left window of your helicopter the entire time? A giant wall of ice. You want to know why? Because that's what it looks like when you're looking at the side of a giant fucking circle. You've been sailing along this coast for ten months. I think it's an infinite wall of jungle. The mm -hmm. sheep keep telling me that I'm just sailing around Hawaii. Marion so lives in the UK small? with her family, and after having a small baby, strange things started happening at her home. And she decided to record some of these strange things, and I'm going to show you guys some of her very creepy videos. This is one of her first videos. Check this out. Can you give me any sign, anything, move it, the chair, from the table, or something? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, okay, wait, 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 look at that, look, look at that, look. Can you stop now? It's enough. I know you are here. It's enough. What do you want? Oh, okay, okay, leave it, leave it. You need to leave now. This is not your house. You need to leave. This is not your Maybe? house. No. They were very creeped out about it. And after uploading several videos on the issue, things got even creepier. The thing is, paranormal investigators say you should not communicate back with these spirits because things can get creepier, and they did. And this is one of her next videos. Check this out. Mm.
Well, you can imagine that they were very creeped out, but it gets even creepier. Check this out. Because is that legit or was those acts? This pedophile committed a crime so disturbing that a petition was created that asked the government to publicly hang him. And the petition gathered thousands of signatures. This is 33 year old Benjamin Taylor from West Virginia. And in 2016, he would commit one of the most sickening crimes I've ever read about. Back in 2016, Benjamin was living with his girlfriend, a woman named Amanda Adkins. At the time, Amanda had recently given birth only nine months ago to her baby daughter, Emily. Emily was a beautiful young girl. And I want to warn you all right now, the details that we're about to discuss are some of the most disturbing I've ever covered. So in October of 2016, Benjamin had only been living with his girlfriend, Amanda, for about a month. And on the morning of Emily's death at around 4.30 a.m., Amanda woke up and went downstairs to search for her baby. When she went downstairs, she saw Benjamin Taylor with his pants unzipped sitting in the dark. Amanda then noticed that her nine-month-old daughter's limp body was lying nearby on a pile of sheets and laundry. Amanda screamed at Benjamin and grabbed her daughter's lifeless body, but he remained silent and stared at the ground. The details of what had just happened down there are disturbing. Local authorities would call this the worst assault that they had seen in decades. You see, Benjamin and Emily were covered in the infant's blood. After the child's body was examined, the authorities were able to determine that she had been assaulted by an adult male multiple times. The infant child was also bleeding extensively and had suffered head trauma. Emily had a fractured skull and brain hemorrhaging. Authorities believe that Emily may have been shaken violently or even thrown to the ground or slammed against a hard object. When police arrived at the scene, Benjamin Taylor was observed trying to wipe something off of his groin. That was eventually determined to be Emily's blood. He also told authorities that he remembered taking the baby to the basement, but that he blacked out after that. You see, he had been smoking and drinking the night before, and that was his excuse. Thankfully, Benjamin was convicted of all charges and sentenced to life in prison without mercy, as you can see right here. But for some people, that just wasn't enough. And like I said at the beginning of this video, a petition was created which asked the government to publicly hang Benjamin. And this petition, before it was shut down, gathered over 50,000 signatures. I mean, this truly is one of the worst things that I've ever covered here on my TikTok. And personally, I don't think that life in prison is enough for this guy. I mean, the pain that poor Emily went through before she was eventually killed... It's just heartbreaking on every single level. And I just hope and pray that the other prisoners that are in there with Benjamin find out or already have found out exactly what he did to land himself in there. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear more true crime stories, listen to the podcast Murder in America that I co-host with my wife, Courtney. It's available on all streaming platforms. Ain't going to well for him, man. If those other inmates, you guys will be hearing those stories, how other inmates, when they found out what you did, if it's that bad, that horrific, how they will try to end it all, man. Because they don't, they don't agree with that. They will try to take you out. Crazy, crazy. Seekers, that's it, man, for this video for you guys today, man. If you guys stay with me to the end of the video, you're a true seeker, man. Seeking the truth. So I appreciate the support, guys. Like I said, I've been seeing that uh, love I've been getting in the past few videos. Really appreciate that, man. We're growing. Like I said, I plan. I'm trying to upload. I don't know if still we're in the beginning of April, so I don't know if I'm going to do dailies or go back to my previous schedules. But I'm kind of working towards well, through something right now, so I'll give you guys an update, man. Once again, man, tell me down below, guys. Let's just start the Discord so you guys can send me some clips and stuff that you guys want me to check out. 
you can make so you guys can kind of have some more input on these videos um if you guys want to do that guys also make sure man follow me on my social medias as well so we're trying to get our numbers up there up as well we can connect on there man so the seekers so we can always be in contact you guys gonna catch you in the next video man i'm out peace seekers What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to the channel. You guys already know what we do here, man. We break down scary and creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, man, from TikTok videos to IG reels, man, to YouTube videos, anything weird, usual, and explain, you can find right here on this channel. I just want to thank the Seekers, man, um, who's been tapping in with the channel, who's been subbing up. Greatly appreciate that, man. We're seeking the truth just like you. That's why you found this channel. Um, found this video for you guys today, man. Let's check it out in a year well that's exactly what happened to these three astronauts they came back to earth after spending 371 days in space when their return capsule was unexpectedly hit by space junk when the three men sergey dimitri and frank were launched back in september 2022 they were told that they were only going to spend six months in space but that later turned into more than a year and that's because the accident caused so much damage to the radiator so they had to wait for a replacement capsule to be launched back into space when it finally arrived, the three astronauts were safely brought back to Earth and landed in a remote area of Kazakhstan on September 27th, 2023. Even though they were okay, they explained how tough it was spending so long in space and the psychological damage. And you might think that 371 days is an absurd amount of time in space, which it is, but Russia still holds a world record of 437 days in space, which was set in the mid-1990s. This is why you should be... Seekers, man, could you imagine being, I guess, like, not touching, I guess, solid ground for more than a, a year? They was in space for that long, bro. Because I guess they said something else with the launch, man. And like I said, what she said was right. Like, it, that's like a freaking mind battle, bro, going on in your head, man, being, I guess, away from your family, friends from that long, bro. But the thing that got me freaking spooked is, and they said, from Russia, they spent, they have a whole the world record while that. Heck, would they in space that long, bro? That's kind of weird, man. Got me asking questions. Be mm. careful of some photographers. Zoe Fit, a model on Instagram, was doing a photo shoot with a photographer she thought she trusted. The photographer's name was William Francis. But when Zoe went to go change her clothes in the bathroom, she noticed a little light on the charger brick. This one. She even found a chip inside. When she plugged the chip in her camera, this is what she found. Him plugging it up. Before I continue, I've been using this crazy fitness app. It even gives you the exact program to get the body you want. Link in my bio if you want to get in shape too. Hmm. Zoe became devastated and even weirded out of the whole situation. And the scary part is you can get these cameras at places like Walmart and Amazon. What the hell? Seekers, man. Did you guys see that freaking camera? You would never suspect, bro. It looks like a freaking innocent wall charger, bro. Man, I'm telling you, man, technology is beginning too advanced and eight nowadays, bro. It's like you're you can constantly be watched, man, like for 24-7, bro. You don't even know. And he's a photographer, so you know how many how much access he had to those girls, bro. She's probably not even on um, his her, his only victim, bro. Probably been doing that a numerous amount of times. Man. How could somebody even let somebody sell something like that, man? That's, like, too dangerous, bro. A wall charger disguised as a camera. I'm about to have me checking all the freaking charges in my name house or something, bro. Making sure nobody ain't trying to watch me. Ooh. Horrifying websites on the internet that you should never visit? Part 1. Goodbyewarden.com gives the last words of 565 Texas inmates who were executed on death row. And some of the statements are absolutely gut-wrenching, with many asking someone to take care of their children when they're gone, and others insisting upon their innocence. Deathdate.info is a dark, morbid site that asks you to enter your name, age, weight, and height before spitting out the exact date that it thinks you're going to die. The site also provides you with three words that it says will be related to your death in some way. PlaneCrashInfo.com has an extensive database filled with recordings, pictures, and transcripts of the final moments of a plane crashing. And MidnightInTheDesert.com has unedited footage of the 67 exorcisms of Annalisa McKell. And trust me, her demonic screams will haunt your nightmares. Bro, those websites, man. 
especially ones about to speak in the date you put in your weight, date, age, bro. And you and you can figure out when you're gonna freaking just eat it. I don't know who would even make a website like that, but who wants to know about something like that, man? I wouldn't even go searching for that. That just put bad energy out to the freaking universe, bro. Seekers and we, and you know we all about good vibes over here, man. So I wouldn't even freaking attempt to even do something that's freaking stupid or scary, bro. That's just me. I know some people would probably do it in a heartbeat. They say, I want to find out. Not me. Seekers, what do you guys think about that, bro? That it. I, I call the edits, man. I got to call them out when I see it. That's clearly an edit. <laughs> That's funny, dude. It makes me want to cry. You dumb motherfucker. I loved you. I loved you. I loved you. It's this is 22 year old Rhett Barlow, and he was seeking nothing but revenge. Let's rewind a little bit. In 2016, a dump truck driver had failed to slow down and re rented a minivan, causing the driver of the minivan to pass away. That driver was Rhett Barlow's mother. The man responsible for her death was Donald Calder Jr., and let me be clear that this was just one horrific accident. He was arrested, served his time, and later released, and Rhett still seeked revenge. On November 28, 2023, in North Carolina, Rhett had allegedly went onto a hitman website where he placed an order for Donald to be unalive. According to the New York Post, that same day he apparently purchased an AR-15. The hitman was indeed real, but reported Rhett to the police, causing him to be arrested. As of right now, Rhett is being held on a $1 million bond and has sparked a lot of controversy. Some are saying that Rhett had every right to seek revenge, while others are saying that Donald had already paid for his actions for a mistake he made. The hitman that reported Rhett to police didn't get arrested as well because he reported Rhett to police, but let me know your thoughts on this case. You have saw me sir. Oh, that one. Yeah, I guess I guess see why if it can cause controversy, man. You know, people want want vengeance and then there's other people said he served his crime, so I guess he already did his time, so I guess they figured the situation's over, man, but I guess the son had freaking it impacted him differently, obviously, because the person who passed away was his mom, so he just wanted vengeance, man, and he wanted to get at any cost, bro. Behind the hit, man, I don't think that was the move to, to go, bro. I can't believe this even a website where you could just type it up and just, hey, I'm going to hire a hit, man. Like, what the hell, bro? I'm telling you, Seekers, man, the things I've been learning watching these videos, bro, that's why, like I said, I freaking, I'm seeking the truth just like you, man. I'm a fellow seeker out here, bro. Told Duran, fitness influencer has died by own choice just days after her daughter's 12th birthday. Michelle Young was a staff sergeant who enlisted at just 17 years old. Hmm. The now 30 for year old served to tours in Afghanistan most recently in 2021. That same year, she extended hmm. her military contract to serve 20 years. As of September, she had served 16. Military oh, values ran deep in her family. The soldier often spoke of her grandfather, a Navy veteran. In her free time, Young worked as a crisis and trauma response volunteer while also volunteering at a local women's and children's homeless shelter. It's unclear how or where it happened. Sarah Main, the coup veteran-owned act Pipewear brand curves and combat boots broke the news of Young's death through a GoFundMe campaign. Michelle was a beautiful soul, an amazing friend, a single mother, a soldier, and is proof you never know what someone is going through or what demons they may be fighting. Mm. Young's daughter was her whole world, and the campaign was organized to help Gracie with anything she may need. We know Michelle would appreciate us all looking out for her now. Crazy, bro. You never know what somebody's going through, man. You just never know. Always we gotta check up on your people, man. Did you know that Chris Watts, the man who killed his entire family in 2018, has seen his daughter's spirit in his jail cell? In the book Letters from Christopher, author Sherilyn Cattle claims that she received a letter from Chris where he details seeing his daughter in a dream in his jail cell. In this dream, he claims to have seen his daughter Cece dancing on the chair next to his bed in the cell. And he claims that while he saw her dancing in the jail cell, the folders and other items he had sitting there started to move by themselves. 
in the same book he also claims to have talked to his dead wife who he murdered on the phone from prison there are multiple articles talking about this happening online and it's also reported that the only things he's allowed to have in his cell are photos of his family and a bible he's also stated in the past that he hopes to be reconnected with his family one day but i don't know if that's going to happen if you want to hear more of the paranormal claims surrounding the watts murders go listen to my podcast murder in america our episode is an hour and 20 minutes long and we go super in depth in the case file and i guarantee if you listen to our podcast you'll learn new things that you've never heard or seen before Freaking check out that freaking podcast book because I didn't even saw that kiss a couple of times. But to hear he said that his daughter and his freaking dead wife, the ones you know, he did the act who was communicating him in the cell. I don't know if he's doing that for attention or they truly, I guess, trying to communicate with the man and I guess haunt him, I guess, haunt him for his wrongdoings, bro. To them, and like these people, bro, when they say they communicate with these spirits, bro, you just you never know, man. I'm trying to talk to a man, relay a message. What do you guys think, Seekers? Edit. Sorry, have to call it out like a Seeker. Once again, another child has been failed by the foster system. On November 2015, a 27-year-old Jennifer Rosenbaum called police when her two-year-old foster daughter, Layla Daniel, began choking on chicken. The dispatcher walked Jennifer through the Heimlich maneuver to try and save Layla's life, but it was too late. When Layla's body was examined, it was clear that she was starved. She had bruises, abrasions, 11 injuries to her torso, and an injury to her liver consistent with punching her abdomen. And according According to the pathologist, Layla's pancreas was also separated in two pieces. But Jennifer's defense argued that the injuries were actually from the Heimlich maneuver. Layla's older sister, who was four years old, was also fostered by Jennifer and her husband Joseph, but she was immediately taken away after Layla's death. But what's crazy about this story and could have possibly saved Layla's life is that this couple never turned in the correct paperwork and only went through a quick screening process to qualify to be foster parents. But also, I question how family services failed to notice the bruises and cuts on Layla's body during their visits. Jennifer was charged as the primary abuser while Joseph was accused of pretty much turning a blind eye. She was sentenced to life in prison and Joseph faces up to 30 years on second degree murder. The thing that was scary to me is like, you, you heard about what she said about the paperwork, how they were just able to freaking get access to the freaking kid like that, man. It's like the people. They're not freaking doing their jobs, bro. And you see how it affects everybody else, man. It's like if one person don't do a job, it's like it's a domino effect that can freaking change somebody's life forever, bro. Just like the simple things, man. It's the simple details, bro, that you can't miss because you never know what's going to happen, bro, in the future. But the outcome of it, it's just a sad and tragic case, the seekers, truly. This right here is a strange true crime case involving two sharks. In 1935, fishermen caught a shark and put it in the aquarium in Sydney. A crowd came to see the shark and miraculously, great timing, it vomited a severed hand and a forearm out. The forearm had a boxing tattoo on it and the hand still had fingerprints. It belonged to Jim Smith, a petty criminal and a boxer. Upon examination, it was found that the limb was deliberately cut off with a knife. This opened a whole murder investigation what makes it more interesting, the tiger shark did not eat the human arm. A smaller shark ate it, and then the tiger shark ate that shark. Jim Smith, the boxer, was last seen at the Cecil Hotel with some business buddies. And by business buddies, I mean everyone that commits insurance fraud. Two men, Brady and Holmes, were both arrested on suspicion of the murder, and later on they confessed to doing it. Mm. Apparently Brady cut up Smith, put him in a box, and tossed it into the bay. And that's when that shark ate the remains, and then the tiger shark ate that shark. It's kind of crazy how this whole thing came full circle like that. Mm. Let me know what you guys think about this case in the comment section below. This one. That case, man, you gotta see how it was done. It was like a freaking loop, bro. Like that freaking shark in the aquarium, man. Freaking, I guess, yeah, you know, traumatized. I guess those people there for freaking ever, bro. But here, how it was all over the freaking insurance fraud, bro. And that shark, and it, the shark ate the remains, and that freaking, and the other shark ate the freaking. Tiger Shark, man, it was just like a big loop, bro. It's like, he wasn't gonna escape that, bro.
that his actions, the people who did that actions, were going to get brought to light, man. That's just insane, bro. To even think about that, man. Ooh. Like, imagine this for me being in an audience. You think you're seeing a shark, bro, and just spits on somebody's freaking arm, bro. Imagine the kids and stuff being there, man, traumatizing them, bro. Like, over a freaking insurance fraud. What money, bro? The root. Woman got a man beaten to death in the streets of Baltimore by screaming. This is Latiqua Mays, and she was 20 years old when all this went down. So Latiqua had lived in Baltimore, Maryland for a very long time. So a little while before this incident, Latiqua was living in a boarding house with one of her closest friends. Mm. And one evening, this man named Donald Robinson broke into their room at the boarding house and assaulted her friend right in front of her. Now, obviously, this was a horrible thing for Donald to have done, but Latiqua didn't think that Donald had been given a long enough prison sentence for the assault. So one day while Latiqua was walking down the street in Baltimore with her father, she came across Donald. She saw him out in the free world. Mm. That's when she started to scream, he graped me, he graped me, pointing at Donald. Now, I'm pretty sure she didn't know exactly what was happening, but she incited people to violence and then ordered a group of men that were nearby to start beating him. So these young men who were at a basketball court nearby joined in. They started beating, punching, kicking Donald. Mm. They held him down and mercilessly beat him in the middle of the street while Latiqua pepper sprayed him. And later on, Donald was eventually taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead from his injuries. Even Latiqua's own father, Willie Mays, joined in on the attack, and he was eventually sentenced to two years in prison for second-degree murder. And Latiqua, she was sentenced to six years in prison. And for a while in her sentence, she was in solitary confinement. Now, I don't know what happened to her after all this. I don't know where she's at now. She's out of prison by now. But the mob violence in this story is absolutely insane. And I can't believe this man was murdered in the middle of the street in broad daylight by a group of people. I got a lot. That shows that goes to show you, man, the power of words, bro. She just said one thing, man, just like that just set a flick off of everybody's head who was involved around there and they just started freaking, I guess, going in on him, bro. That's why you gotta be careful, man, what you say, cause you never know, bro. But think about it. She said one word, bro. Cost that man his life, man. It was like a like like a live execution seekers. Gotta be aware of what you say, bro. This power in words. Yeah, dude. What the? We get old. You can say that. I am saying that. I was by age. I was by age. And by maturity. Ah, uh, you maybe. You were a teacher, Mary. You can't matter. say I was immature. But you don't know him. No, but I don't need to know him in this discussion. He's the child. Who was I'm the talking boss? about you. Who was the boss? Who was the boss? What? Who was the boss back you know, then? I was being pursuing you. Who was the boss back then? Trying to flip on. This is ridiculous. No, this who ridiculous. was? Who was? Just say. Just say. Who was the boss? All I knew was what I knew back then. But who was the boss? He was 13, Mary. But who was the boss? This is getting weird. Who was the boss? What? Who? You're pursuing the relationship. Who was the boss? This is sick, man. Well, I was the pursuer. Yes. Mary, even as you're but hearing this now, come on, he was 13. Does it matter? It absolutely matters. Oh well, flaw me. Flaw me as a as an uh as an adult? Yes, flaw me. I did the yeah. best I could. Yeah. What? There's no way she was like trying to turn it on him, like as the freaking interview was saying, like, well it doesn't even matter if he did all that. Like he was a child, you're an adult in that situation, bro. You gotta you can't freaking use your morals and stuff just to separate yourself from that, bro. People like that man dangerous, bro. They wanna take freaking Accountability for your actions, bro. Seekers, you gotta be aware of people like that. Called the Mines of Colorado. Hello, my name is Urban. I am a Tommy Knocker. We are the spirits of miners that passed away while working in the mine. We are not evil, but don't play around with us. We can be very mischievous. During the gold rush, mines began digging into the mountains of Colorado. Thousands of men journeyed to the west in hopes of striking gold and getting rich. Mm. However, most mines are extremely dangerous, and we would try to warn them of a potential collapse or dangerous gas coming. But 
since we were spirits, it was tough to warn the miners of the dangers ahead. We would knock on the walls, and it would echo through the mine. This was our first warning, but some miners thought we were guiding them to gold, and would start digging towards their doom. We would then blow out their candles and turn off their headlights. Unfortunately, some didn't take our warnings. What is the Siberian dancing lady? So you've probably seen this very eerie viral video of a woman dancing in the streets. The video allegedly depicts some kind of entity known as the Siberian dancing lady. Mm -hmm. According to some urban legends, if you look directly into the eyes of the Siberian dancing lady, apparently she will possess you or attack you or something of that nature. Side note, this is actually why you keep seeing those sorry for looking into your eyes comments. They are because of the Siberian dancing lady. The Siberian dancing lady is apparently known to jump in front of cars and dance in a very entrancing way that doesn't seem human-like. Now, there have been many reported sightings of this dancing lady, and they're all very, very creepy and very, very eerie. But so far, I don't think there's actually been any kind of report of someone being possessed by the Siberian dancing lady. Mm -hmm. So the part about her possessing you is probably made up. But there are so many videos of this dancing lady all over the internet that I personally believe she is a real thing, but we just don't know exactly what she is. Seekers, man. What would you, what would you do, man, if you just saw in the middle of your neighborhood, in the middle of the night, you just see a, baby, a lady just dancing, bro. And it keeps, like, recurring, bro, over and over again. You would definitely think something's up, bro. Something's freaking, I guess, wrong with her, man. The Siberian dancer lady, bro. That really piqued my interest, bro. I'm gonna have to do some more research into that, bro. Like, why she's doing all that dance in the middle of the night? And to say that she's jumping in front of cars, that makes it even 10 times more dangerous, bro. Like, that's just an accident waiting to happen. Seekers. Edit. <laughs> Today's case is one that shouldn't have even happened, but unfortunately many girls, just like Lily, will suffer the same fate that she did. In December of 2021, Lily was just 18 years old and she'd been out at a nightclub. And in said nightclub, she ended up meeting 31-year-old Lewis Hain. Lewis was a father himself, mm. and the pair were seen on CCTV leaving together. In the CCTV show, and it was clear that the two were getting on very well. It looked like they were having a nice time, and it appeared that they'd just sort of left the club to have a bit of time to themselves. However, Lily's mum was on her way to pick up Lily, which had been arranged, and Lily had kept in touch with her mum, letting her know that she was nearly at the arranged pickup spot, until eventually she stopped responding to her mum. The pair ended up heading down a back alley and it's believed that because Lily ended up saying no to Lewis's sexual advances, he murdered her. By forcefully ripping off her shirt and then strangling her and dumping her body into water nearby. To make this case even more heartbreaking, Lily's own mother had eventually ended up seeing Lewis walking down the street. She ended up looking at him and she thought he seemed odd, but little did she know he just murdered her own daughter. And to top off, and to just prove even further what kind of a person that Lewis is, he then got home and told his girlfriend, his long-term partner, that he'd just strangled someone. And it was hours later when Lily's body was discovered. So due to him being seen on CCTV with Lily, he was arrested. And in court, he stated that the reason why he killed Lily was because she threatened to accuse him of being a rapist after she found out that he had a girlfriend which I personally think is utter rubbish. And he was sentenced to a minimum of 23 years in prison. Cases like this should not be happening simply because girls say no to a man. And I really, really hope that Lily gets the justice that she really, really deserves. It's just disgusting. This is one of the worst cases. It truly is, bro. Some people, man, they just can't freaking this accept the concept of no man no means no if she said no and that's it in the discussion bro i like to say the freaking mom to hear that she like walked past him bro and she saw that some was weird and some was off man but and to figure out that he freaking took her daughter away from her bro like she knew i guess or she felt something off i'm telling you man people they can 
they can sense things like that, bro. I truly believe that, man. If he can say he just walked in and just told his girlfriend of the action that she did, but like he just didn't have no remorse. He just said, I did it. See, this, bro. This world is evil, man. Always gotta be aware, bro. Always. This is human history. This is the murder of Christine Silawan. She was from the Philippines and was a volunteer in church, and she used the church every day from 4 to 6 p.m. On the day of her murder, she went to church as per her schedule, but she didn't come home after that. Her parents then started to worry and they began searching for her with their neighbors. And what they found is absolutely horrid. They found her body in a farm where half her face was sliced like a piece of pizza and her face was literally skinned down to her skull. Also, her brain was completely destroyed by acid. The police then started investigating and they checked the cameras and found out that she was with a guy. The people started protesting about this case and the case was then given to special officers. They had a lot of pressure on this. Mm -hmm. A week before this happened, she broke up with her boyfriend so the police took him into custody. And he was proving that he was at home all day when she was murdered but officers were completely tired of this case and they then sentenced him as the murderer. But after a few months, a thief was caught in a store where he confessed that he murdered and raped Christine. He said he started talking to her on Facebook with a fake account and was using fake photos of another guy that was pretty good looking. Christine fell for the guy and she assumed that he was about 20 years old and they started texting daily. One day they both decided to meet up at 6pm near the church she went to. But upon arriving, Christine noticed that this was not the guy she was talking to and he was around 40-ish years old. She then refused to talk to him and tried to go back, but he held her hands extremely forcefully. He then took her far away from town and raped her repeatedly and put iron rods inside her personal organs. He then cut her face in half and then skinned her whole head down to the skull. And to make it even worse, he put acid inside of her head. The autopsy also revealed that her tongue, trachea, esophagus, parts of her neck, and her right ear were missing. The self-proclaimed killer of this case named Renato Lanis said that he used barber-type scissors and stabbed her 30 times on different parts of her body and skinned her face. Mm. Christine Silouan was only 16 years old and this case is extremely haunting. There's a picture of her body that was found in the field, but Google did a really good job of not showing it and hiding it. So even if you do go looking for the picture, I don't think you're going to find it. This is one of those cases that after you get done reading it, you just feel some sort of uneasiness. Mm. I feel so bad for Christine's family and I can't imagine finding my daughter in this state. May Christine Silouan rest in peace. This 18 year old- Freaking all oh, a freaking catfish, bro. I tell you man, bro, freaking people, bro. Freaking demented, man. She made a freaking fake account profile to talk to her, bro. I, she shouldn't know because it's true. Freaking self was revealed. He just decided to do the unthinkable, man. That's what I'm telling you, bro. Like, people behind, behind these profiles and stuff, man, you got to do research into them, man. I guess if you're talking to somebody online because you can never know, but it can be a catfish. They can be a completely whole different person, bro. You can make a whole different life online, bro. It's freaking scary, man, how you could just betray yourself to somebody else, but you're a completely different person. Seekers, bro. Tell me, have you guys uh, have any problem in catfish before, bro? Model was murdered, and you won't believe what her killer said. This is Sally Ann Bowman, and she was born on September 11th, 1987, in Carl South London. She attended the Brit School for Performing Arts and Technology in Croton. Sally Bowman had dreams of one day appearing on the cover of Vogue and had been compared to supermodel Kate Moss. Mm. After leaving school in 2004, she worked part-time as a hairdresser and model. In January 2005, she joined Post Model Management, a local modeling agency, and she became the face of Swatch Watches and took part in the Swatch Alternative Fashion Week in April 2005. But in September of that year, her life would drastically change forever. On the night of September 24, 2005, Sally Bowman and her older sister Nicole and a group of friends went to Lloyd's Bar in Croton, where they stayed until 1 a.m. Mm. After leaving the bar, Sally Bowman waited outside for 15 minutes before being taken to her friend's house by taxi. She contacted her ex-boyfriend, Louis Broadston, and he agreed to pick her up and take her home after she told him Nicole had been arrested for fighting. 
She took a taxi back to Croton Town Central, where Strochton picked her up around 2 a.m., but while in the car, Sally and her ex-boyfriend got into a fight and they accused the other of infidelity, which had been contributed to their recent split. Shortly after 4 a.m., Sally left the car and Lewis drove off. Minutes later, Sally was then stabbed in the neck and stomach and was then raped as she lay dead or dying on the ground. Her handbag, cardigan, and underwear and mobile phone were stolen. Police initially treated Lewis as a suspect and he was then arrested. After being held for four days, DNA evidence eliminated him as a suspect and he was released without charge. On June 28, 2006, 35-year-old Croton man Mark Dixie was arrested on suspicion of murdering Sally. He was charged with Sally's murder and remained in custody to await trial. This development came after police discovered a DNA link to the murder, mm -hmm. having taken a DNA swab from Dixie when they arrested him two weeks earlier for allegedly being involved in a brawl at a bar, where he was working as a chef. After more than 18 months in custody, Mark Dixie went on trial at the Old Bailey in the City of London on February 4, 2008, charged with the murder of Sally Ann Bowman. He admitted to having sex with her after finding her on the ground outside her home, but denied murdering her and said that he did not realize she was dead or dying when he found her. Which is just sickening because we all know he did it and what he did to her. Mark Dixie was then found guilty of Sally Bowman's murder by anonymous verdict on February 22, 2008 after three hours of jury deliberation. The judge sentenced Mark Dixie to life in prison with a minimum of 34 years, meaning that he is unlikely to be considered for parole until at least 2040. It was also revealed that Mark Dixie was already a convicted serial sex offender. This case is just so chilling and sad because Sally Bowman had dreams of becoming a model and just doing something good with her life. And that went all out the door because this mentally unstable man had other plans. She was just 18 years old with her whole life ahead of her. May she rest in peace. Freaking case, man. These people, bro. They be doing the mental things, bro. <laughs> Freaking never fails, bro. To say that she was that young as well, man. She had plans for life and all that, bro. He just came along and just freaking ruined it all, bro. Just because of the type of person he was, man. Seekers, bro. So it was an evil place, man. You always gotta be aware because you never know somebody's intentions, bro. You just never know. YouTube seekers, man. If you guys made it with me to the end of the video, you're a real seeker, man, who's seeking the truth. So I appreciate that, man. Guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button, man. Hit that post notification bell, man, so you guys never miss a video. Um, guys, we're climbing, we're growing, so I really appreciate that. Guys, gonna catch you in the next video. I'm out. Peace seekers.